Today we're going to discuss our latest product, Automate 9. For those of you who are coming from Automate 8, things might look just a little bit different. The organization and interface have been completely overhauled. So you know what? Let's dive right in. The Automate product is comprised of two components. You have the task administrator, where you administer, manage, and create tasks. And the other component, the task builder. The task builder is the development interface used to visually assemble a task or process that you want carried out. So for this demo, let's create a new task. To do so, we're going to come over here to the plus, and now let's rename this as something. So let's call this stock ticker. Congratulations, you've created your very first task. So now let's look at some of the properties of this task. To do so, we're going to right click, and we're going to go to properties. Inside the properties, you will find various options and settings that pertain to the specific task. For example, in the notes, this is where you can add commas regarding the particular task. Now let's look at some of the triggers. Triggers are events that cause a particular task to run. They range in functionality and provide awareness of your network-wide system events and states. Currently, inside our task, we don't have any triggers added, so let's add one. As you can see, we have a variety of triggers. We have ones that run on schedules, ones that monitor windows, performance, keys, files, and so forth. For example, why don't we look at a simple job schedule? So let's set this up to run Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. So to do so, we're going to go to specific days of the week. Select Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And now let's set the time. So that's going to be 9, 0, 0, 0, 0 and a.m. So we'll click Update. And now a trigger has been added to our particular task. So let's go back. And now let's change gears a little bit and look at our task builder. The task builder is a visual interface that you use to visually assemble a process. It is divided into three panes. On your left, you have all of your available actions. These are all organized by logical folder. So for example, if you wanted to have something to deal with files, you would basically be working out of the file system folder. On your right hand side, this is your workspace area. So basically you select actions from here on your left and you drag them out to this workspace in a logical manner. Down here, you have your output and debug pane. So basically, you can see what's being displayed, what's stored in particular variables, breakpoints, and so forth. So for example, why don't we build a simple task? Uh, let's open a web browser. So to do that, we're going to come over here to our search bar, and we're going to start typing. And notice it filters down my results as I hit each key. So we're looking for our web browser. Let's drag that out. When we drag out the web browser, it opens up this action properties. Under the activities to perform, these are all the actions that we can do. So we can basically open a web browser session, close one, get and set values, wait, click, and so forth. In this particular example, we're going to open a browser. So we'll select our browser, Internet Explorer. And for our page URL, why don't we go to Yahoo Finance? So that's going to be finance.yahoo.com. We'll click OK. And notice now the first step has been added in our workspace. So now let's run this. So to do so, we're going to come up here to the blue circle, and we're going to click on that. And notice now we have a browser session op open with Yahoo Finance. So basically, if you were to interact with this page manually, what you would do is you would type in your stock ticker symbols here, and you would have to click on this Get Quotes to get the information back. So we're going to do the same thing, but using our software. So to do so, we're going to get another web browser. And then this time, rather than open, we're going to use what we call Set Value we're going to write information to that particular box. So the first thing we need to do is we need to see this magnifying glass right here. We need to drag it over to the browser. So we're going to click, we're going to hold, and we're going to drag it over. And notice there's a little green box around it as you dragged it over. Now the next thing you need to do is we need to locate the HTML element. So in this case, what we're doing is we need to grab that uh, box. So we're going to click, hold, and drag it over. And notice that I mouse over different elements. There's a little blue box around it. So I want this box right here. So I'm going to let go. And if we can see inside our search elements, it's grabbed all the information. It knows it is an input box and it knows it's text quote. And now what we need to do inside our interactions is we need to specify text. So let's search for Apple and Microsoft. So that's going to be AAPL and MSFT. So we'll click OK. So now it's going to write that information inside here. Now the last thing we need to do is we have to have it click on this get quotes. So what we're going to do now is we're, again we're going to drag over web browser. But this time rather than using one of the first two, we're going to come down here to click. 
So again, we need to drag over the magnifying glass to our browser. So click, hold, and drag. And notice as I drag it over, there's that green box again. So now that I know that my browser is specified, now I need to specify the element that I want to click. So that's going to be that Get Quotes button. So I'm going to click, drag, and again drag it over until it, the blue box is around the Get Quotes. Let go. And now it's grabbed the input. I, these attributes look correct. And then I'm going to click OK. So now let's run this. So again, we're going to come up here. We're going to click on the Run. And if we did everything correctly, it should open up the browser. It should put in the information for Apple and Microsoft. And it should click on the Get Quotes, which it did here. So notice now we have the results for both Apple and Microsoft down here. Great. So it looks like everything is working properly. So before we end, why don't we look at a couple of new actions that we have in Automate 9. The first is our OCR tool. The OCR action lets you select a TIFF, a JPEG, or a PDF file and convert that image to text. It's really, really cool. The other action that we've added is the Microsoft Dynamics CRM. This is kind of just a peek of what's in 9. We'll be covering those more in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned. Thanks for your time, and we hope to see you again soon.